Sorry. <laughs> a little bit. That's fine. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Anirudh has presented a great case. I think from the point of view of a comprehensive ophthalmologist, uh, I think I'm just going to go be very basic. Uh, and he has discussed most of the points. So you, we, we have here 53-year-old male, irregular treatment, 10 years diabetic, 6 by 18 in the right eye. And uh, of all, he has described all the features there. Only thing is on OCT, what he was trying to say about the hyper reflective dots. I don't know. I'm not sure because everything is showing sort of a shadowing behind. So maybe these are all uh, perhaps uh, uh, hard exudates there. And um, the left eye, uh, of course, uh, uh, is uh, something I mean, which is uh, he has already described. And it is, uh, uh, of course, uh, I think he categorized it very well. The first thing for anybody, whenever a patient of diabetic retinopathy is uh, seen, is to categorize, and which he did very well. And uh, we have to uh, kind of uh, 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 be very clear here that these days we use these terms. So right eye had a center involving uh, uh, diabetic macular edema, and left was non-central involving diabetic macular edema. And uh, he did all the investigations, whatever I have listed here, and uh, that includes both systemic as well as uh, uh, the ocular ones. Uh, I think only thing, uh, I, I don't think uh, he mentioned about the blood pressure. I don't know if he was hypertensive. So I think uh, that point uh, we can take uh, later. And uh, what is important here is, whenever we want to interpret a angiogram, we also need a fundus photograph because I think don't do it uh, independently. This is for any comprehensive ophthalmologist. So must look at the fundus picture or the uh, fundus itself and then interpret it. And early and late pictures are very important. That is what he had shown and nicely shown that how the, uh, uh, the leakage or the diffuse leakage or CME is seen, which was also demonstrated nicely on OCT picture. And in the left eye, you can see again here, you have these focal leaks and they are away from the center. And here again, you can see that these are uh, leaking uh, in the late stage. And uh, so he has presented this, this investigation. That means patient is not anemic. Yeah, he's not, he's poorly controlled. It's very important. And uh, HbA1c is also nine and is dyslipidemic. So these are the major issues. So you need to take care of all these things achieve a excellent glycemic control, it will be very important in this case. And also reduce the serum lipids because he has a dyslipidemia. And of course, uh, uh, the treatment here, primary treatment is intravitreal anti-VEGF with or without deferred laser, deferred focal laser. I have put it here because I think I'll come to it later on that we have a lot of difficulties as far as the treating our patients are concerned. They come from all different strata of society. And uh, I think if we go according to this, what DRCR network has shown us, so first year only you may need eight, 10 injections, next year maybe three, four, and the third year it may go down to maybe anywhere from one to three. So, but many of our patients, they won't be able to sort of uh, be in, in this group, there can be a problem. And uh, if there was an ideal situation, patient is very well off, now, this is the patient which falls in a group where probably, uh, because this is less than 20 by 50, 6 by 18 visual acuity. So ideally, according to this study, we could have started uh, ILEA. And, but I think uh, did very well with the Rani Bizumab. And uh, obviously, that is according to the study, what, what has been mentioned here. And what is very important to keep in mind for everybody here is don't even go for any intervention, even if you have a center involved in diabetic macular edema and you have normal visual acuity. In those cases, even 6-9 for that matter, that's fine. It is less than, it has to be less than 6-9. Then you just, the three groups where the ILEA laser observation was done, they did equally well at two years. So the observation is best uh, mode and do at that time a good metabolic control so they would not deteriorate if the visual acuity is normal. So we need not uh, put these patients on treatment. That's very, very important. And this was from the 
protocol V, which we learned and got published in uh, uh, April 2019. Suppose this patient has a cataract. That is what the comprehensive uh, ophthalmologist is going to be interested. And if he has a cataract and he wants to remove, I think this data is very important here again. Of course, we knew, right? this from uh, olden times when the ETDRS uh, study was published, that here, even now, if the patient has a moderate and severe and they are at high risk in three to six months, they are going to progress. So I think this case was a moderate uh, uh, NPDR and also associated with DME. So this will definitely need then uh, a good metabolic control. Uh, of course, you always use topical a and Surgeon should be excellent as far as the phaco surgery is concerned because it, otherwise it would be a problem. And you need to avoid multifocal IOL. Well, don't do those, those IOLs in these kind of cases. And of course, this is the case where you would definitely need a pre op or per op intravitreal avastin, lucentis, ilia, or whatever. If the patient is very poor, may not afford anything, trimethylenone, uh, ideally a ozodex, especially in the right eye, and that would be the ideal situation. Uh, what I want to say in the end here is that the individual pays in India for the treatment. And suppose this patient is very poor, how do you treat it? Suppose he it doesn't afford anything. And these days, like in PGI, we have a problem, we can't even use Avastin. So what do you do then? How do you treat this? You're not going to leave him. So that is what the question is. So because of these reasons and so many other reasons, most of the diabetics are untreated and under monitored. So we have to understand that they have lot many comorbid. I think I'll be touching upon some of those things in my lecture also later on. But the, what is important here is that we have to treat, even if he doesn't afford anything. Sometimes we might even give a trimethylone one milligram or at upper limit two milligram and then laser because you have to project those frames for lasering and do exactly precise laser. That would be in case there is no choice. So don't leave them. That is what is important. So I think uh, these are some of the things which I wanted to mention here because uh, the treatment would vary and Anirudh has presented it very well. And I, uh, I think it's from my side is open uh, for uh, the discussion. Dr. Vishali, please.